Hi everyone, I'm Rob Franick. I'm Editor-in-Chief here at the Prince Review, back with you today again to talk about all things ACT. Folks, after the April ACT administration date was canceled, ACT test takers around the globe have been eagerly looking forward to the June 13th ACT administration. As you know, as well as our full team at the Prince Review knows, that's the next scheduled date for the ACT exam. Now, the ACT team has been waiting to make the call on whether to keep that day intact, as well as keeping as many test centers open and operational as possible. And finally, the ACT team has made that call, kind of. The ACT team released just a few days back the list of test centers that will be closed and not operational for that June 13th ACT administration. That list is a slim 57 page PDF that list out, that lists out, pardon me, center code, center name, city, as well as state of each of those locations. Our team with the Princeton Review crunched all of those numbers to give you a clear sense of what the data and that list actually mean, both for you personally, as well as for the ACT administration in general. We looked at two different data points. Number one, how many test centers are there in total for each state and how many test centers had cancellations. Folks, the one data point that we don't have is how many test centers were originally scheduled to administer those ACT exams. Now, just a housekeeping note here, it is highly, highly unlikely that every single last site had been scheduled. But with that said, I'm gonna call your attention to a couple of states and districts to paint a quick picture of what the ACT changes look like for that June 13th exam. So let's start with Washington, D.C., because there is good news there. If you're in D.C., uh, there are three sites right now that are open and ready to take you on June 13th with no cancellations. That said, if you're in my home state of New York, a whopping 73% of all possible test centers are closed. Folks, that's 189 closures out of a possible 259 test centers. Things are only slightly better across the Hudson in New Jersey, where 70 centers are closed out of a possible 120 centers altogether. Folks, that's a little more than 58% of test centers closed in New Jersey. In New Jersey, If you look to the Golden West, specifically in California, 115 centers closed out of a possible 250 five altogether. That's a cool 45%. Washington State got 32 out of a possible 82 centers closed. That's about 40%. And folks, it's that 40% number that's pretty much on par with the national average, which is about 41% of all possible test centers for the ACT. June 13th administration are now closed. Now again, we don't yet know how many of those were actually scheduled in the first place. So it's possible that the percentage of scheduled ACT locations is actually much higher. But it's safe to say that about half and possibly more of the students who plan to take the ACT on June 13th will not be able to do so. And actually, that percentage is higher because on top of all of these things, even at sites where the ACT was not canceled, there are instances in which the test centers themselves had to reduce their capacity. Now that shift caused some students to be displaced. Now that's a term that the ACT team coined. And if you're like us at the Princeton Review, you're asking a couple of questions. Number one, who got displaced? And number two, how do you get priority status? Now to be clear, the ACT prioritized 12th grade students and then 11th grade students. And then they looked at the order in which students registered for their ACT exams. Now folks, we're looking for your comments here. So if you had your personal ACT canceled or your whole test center closed, please, please leave us a comment and tell us about your experience. Now, even more importantly than that, we hope that you will not despair. There's another ACT test date coming up. It is inked in for June 20th, as well as two test dates coming up in July, not to mention more dates coming up in the fall, starting with the all-important September administration of the ACT that is super scored, that is section retest allowable, and it is a digital ACT option. 
Folks, let's also remember that the team at the ACT said that they're planning to create a digital remote test version of the ACT available late fall and early winter of this year. So while you may not be able to do anything about test center closures or test taker displacements, you can without question prep, knowing that you have a durable future test date to work with. And folks, one more note, like so many of the, so much, pardon me, of the rest of the world, the ACT has just put in place a series of cost cutting measures, including calls for voluntary resignations. Martin Rorda, who is the ACT CEO, is part of that cohort. Mr. Rorda is stepping down from his position at ACT. And this is without question a time of unprecedented changes, and we've been talking to you about those changes each day, but it's important to remind ourselves that colleges know this as well, and they're accounting for it. The ACT can still absolutely help you through the college admission process. Number one, getting accepted to colleges. Number two, as we've talked long about here, earning merit-based financial aid dollars, and of course, helping you to secure academic placement once you're there. Folks, what you can't control, and it's unfortunate, is your test setup. But that said, you can prep for your future ACT. And please know that we'll be here keeping you as informed as possible, and of course, rooting for you every step of the way. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on the SAT, the ACT, college admission, and much more. And please check out our free live streams right here on YouTube. Our promise, folks, to you is to continue to keep you up to date on these important exams and other changes throughout admission. Folks, again, Rob Franick, I'm Editor-in-Chief here at the Princeton Review. Back with you again tomorrow. Take care.